Here. Thanks for checking out the DeMorgan's Law video for MathCelebrity.com. My name is Don Subsick and I'm the founder of Math Celebrity. And today in this video, you're going to learn how to use DeMorgan's Laws for certain properties of sets. DeMorgan's Laws help you simplify how to identify certain items and sets with complements, unions, and intersections. So with that said, let's go ahead and start the tutorial. So first, let's talk about De Morgan's Laws. They're transformational rules for two sets. And there's two De Morgan's Laws you need to learn. The first is the complement of the union equals the intersection of the complements. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you the notation for that. And if we read that out in English, it's not A or B equals not A and not B. And the second De Morgan's Law you need to learn is the complement of the intersection equals the union of the complements. And if we read that out in plain English, it's not A and B equals not A or not B. Now, it's worthy to note whenever you see or, that corresponds to a union, and whenever you see and, that corresponds to an intersection. So and, intersection, or union. Now let's take a look at a visual in using Venn diagrams and the two De Morgan's Laws. So the first one here is this, the two yellow circles all together is A union B. Everything else outside the blue is the complement of A union B. And what this is saying is if we take everything not in A and we intersect it with everything not in B, we're going to get this blue area here. And for De Morgan's Law 2, we know this piece here is the intersection of A and B. So if we take the complement of the intersection, that's everything here except for the yellow. And what the other way to look at it is the complement of A, so everything not in A, which would be this piece of B in all the blue, union with the complement of B, which is everything in this little piece of A and all the blue. So when you join those two pieces together, you get this little yellow piece here. So let's look, let's take a set notation refresher. Now if you've watched videos on our channel, you've probably seen the set notation video. And even if you, even if you have or you have not, it's this is a quick 60 second refresher because you're going to need to know these properties before we jump into the proof and the application of De Morgan's Law. So let's start with two sets. We'll call them A and B. Now the union of the two sets we covered briefly in the pictorial last slide was A union B. And again, that's everything in set A or in set B. And the next principle you need to learn is the intersection. And remember we said AND goes with the intersection, so A intersection B is everything in set A AND in set B. So the distinguishing word there is OR for union and AND for intersection. Finally, the universal set U is all possible elements in your defined universe. So on the prior slide, and let me jump back, it's the blue section U. So that's every possible value within your, your universe. And finally, the complement of a set. And that's written as A with a little tick or apostrophe or A with a little C up top. And that's everything not in your set A, but within the universal set. So let's, let's prove De Morgan's law number one. So we'll start with, again, complement of the union equals the intersection of the complements. So we'll start with let P equal A union B complement, and we'll let Q equal A complement intersection B complement. We'll say X is an arbitrary element of P and that means X is an element of P and X is an element then of A union B complement. So that means that X cannot be an element of A union B. And because of that, X cannot be an element of A and it cannot be an element of B. Because if we had A union B and X was an element, it has to be either in A or B. And if it's not in the union, it can't be in either of those sets. So let's jump to the next line. That means 
that x is either or x is both not an element of a and it's not an element of b because if it can't be an a and it can't be in b then it's an element of a complement and it's an element of b complement and what that means is remember the word and and corresponds with intersection x is an element of a complement intersected with b complement because it has to be both an A complement and B complement. And that means then that X is an element of Q, which as we see, Q was A complement intersection B complement. So we've proven the first De Morgan's Law. And now let's look at a real world application of the first De Morgan's Law. We'll do a test problem. And again, a refresher, a complement of the union equals the intersection of the complements. We'll take two sets A and B. And there's our first De Morgan's Law. Let's let the universal set, we'll make it simple here, we'll make it all the numbers from 1 to 10. So that's, for any set that we define within U, it has to be within the universal set. So we'll define A as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we'll define B as 2, 4, and 6. So let's walk through an application of De Morgan's Law number 1. A union B means anything in A or B, so we're joining both the sets. So that means that A union B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But then we also want to determine A union B complement, and that's anything not in A union B, but it's in the universal set. So if we take out 1 through 6, we're left with 7, 8, 9, and 10 in the complement of the union. Next, we'll take A complement. So that's everything not in A, but in the universal set. So that means we've got 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And we've got B complement, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So that's anything not in B. And here's where we bring it home. So if we take the intersection of A complement and B complement, we want to find everything in A complement and B complement. And there's four elements, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And notice, those are the exact same four elements in A union B complement. So now you've seen a live application of De Morgan's Law number 1. So let's jump ahead and prove De Morgan's Law number 2. And we'll walk through the... the statement out loud of De Morgan's Law number two, and that says the complement of the intersection equals the union of the complements. So again, let's let P equal A intersection B complement, and we'll let Q equal A complement union with B complement. So we'll let X be an arbitrary element of P, and what that means is then X is an element of P, so it's an element of A intersection B complement. And because it's an inter, uh, L, X is an element of A intersection B complement, it means X cannot be an element of A intersection B. And what that means is X cannot be an A or it cannot be in B. And what this means is X is an element of A complement or it's an element of B complement, one or the other. And because of that, if, we, if it's or, remember or corresponds to union, X is an element of A complement, union B complement. And finally, what that means is X is an element of Q. So we've proven the second De Morgan's Law, that the intersection, the complement of the intersection equals the union of the individual complements. And with the second De Morgan's Law proven, let's go ahead and jump ahead to a real-world problem using the second De Morgan's Law. Let's read it out again. It's the complement of the intersection equals the union of the complements. We'll take two sets, A and B, and I'm listing out the, the second De Morgan's Law, just for your reference. So again, the universal set, let's make it easy for our viewers. It's going to be the numbers 1 to 10. We'll let A, again, be the same as the first De Morgan's Law, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And B has three elements, 2, 4, and 6. So if we take A, A intersection B, we want everything in A and B, so that's 2 and 4. 
which means A intersection B complement is everything in the universal set not in A intersection B. So we get 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And we want to find A complement and B complement. So A complement is everything not in set A, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And B complement everything in not, not in set B, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now let's bring it home with the second De Morgan's Law. So if we take A complement intersection B complement, and what that means is everything in A complement and B complement, we get 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we want everything not in A and not in B. So with the second De Morgan's Law proven, let's go ahead and finish up our video here. So the easiest shortcut for you first is whenever you hear union, you think or. Whenever you hear intersection, you think and. And when you, when you see that, you can read these out with the intersection of the complement equals the union of the complements. And then if we read the other De Morgan's Law, it's the complement of the union equals the intersection of the complements. So I want to thank you for watching the De Morgan's Law video, and I will see you in the next video.